Good morning. So as you remember that we, we just started discussing the topic dynamic RAM in the last class. I told you that the the most you know primitive kind of DRAM uses four transistors per cell, whereas it was gradually reduced. The number was gradually reduced to three transistors per cell, and ultimately it was made one transistor and one storage capacitor per cell. And that is the latest state of the art DRAM. Whatever DRAM you are now seeing you know, as a VLSI product that contains per memory cell, one MOS transistor as a switch, and a small capacitor with large capacitance value, this relatively large capacitance density is high as the storage capacitor. So it consists of a, a single element consists of one MOSFET and one storage capacitor. And I was just about to discuss a particular chip, particular configuration, and then of course just at the end of the class. I would like to redraw the circuit because the last time I could not redraw it and <coughs> draw it nicely. I'd like to redraw it now. Little bit in inverse fashion.
So because of, you know, the last time, the way I was drawing, it was difficult to draw this vertical thing because that is what I normally visualize more easily rather than the horizontal one because it is basically a column of the array. So this is, this represents a, a column, a single column of a one transistor DRAM cell, one transistor DRAM chip. And it is, it is, it has been planned in such a way that you see that the so-called this line, which is nothing but the bit line, you can call it B and B bar, or the always complementary in nature. But this is for two different memory planes. One is, I call it memory A, memory A, memory array A. So in the upper half of the chip, in the upper half, you imagine there are a large number of such columns on the chip. And in the upper half, I have got a, an array called memory array A. And in the lower half, I have another array called memory B. Along with, and this, you just see it is the same thing which I discussed earlier with the bit line. A MOSFET switch is connected whose input is derived from the so-called address lines and there is a storage capacitor CS in each. These are the storage capacitances. Okay? And you see that in both the planes, memory A side and memory B side, I have an additional word line, which, which I call it dummy word line for memory B. Similarly, dummy word line for memory A. The reason for this will be discussed after some time. Why it has been put, it will be discussed. So in addition to, and you see that uh, in, in just both the memories are served by a single sense amplifier calm refresher refreshing circuit, which is this one. And this is one of the very intricate, very important, you know, the array is not that, you know, it, anybody can design the array. There is repetition. There is nothing special about it. But there is really something special about the sense amplifier calm refreshing circuit which should have, should be very, very sensitive and which should serve certain very important purpose, some of which I've already discussed in connection with CMOS, SRAM, <coughs> refreshing and, sorry, the, uh, why the need of sensing. Similarly, I also discussed the refresh circuit in connection with the fourth transistor DRAM. So, you know, you need not only a refreshing circuit for dynamic RAM, but also you need a sensitive sense amplifier circuit to increase the speed of the memory, speed of operation of the memory. So what I have done, this circuit is common to both the planes A and B. Only additional thing I have made is there are two extra dummy lines. This one is called a dummy word line for memory B. This one is called a dummy word line for memory A, just the opposite one. You see that this particular, there are many, many versions of this circuit. 
I have shown you a typical one. This is purely in MOS. It could be theme CMOS. It could be a by CMOS with the let most letters to one. By CMOS. Instead of only CMOS or bipolar. Bipolar is very, consumes a lot of space. So by CMOS is the latest state of the art sense amplifier, which is meant for very high speed application. But otherwise, in old, any old, you know that um, DRAM is a pure NMOS technology. And these transistors are all in MOSs as indicated here. All enhancement mode devices, simple switches. Now you see, as I told you earlier, that <coughs> there are two problems in a DRAM, which is a very high density. Who stores who, how the data, <coughs> how the data or datum or the particular digit is stored in a DRAM? Simply by charging a capacitor or discharging a capacitor and holding that for a long time. For not long, for an appropriate length of time. Okay? And that is served by this so called storage capacitors. So, what is my need is that this storage capacitor should be as large as possible. In that case, RC time constant will be very large. And as a result, even if there is a leakage resistance which is not that high, RC is so large that the decay of the charge, that means that either the charging to discharging state or discharging to charging state, that will, you know, whatever the case may be, that will be, that discharging state will be preserved for quite some time, say only charge state, will not discharge state, not discharging, I am repeating, charge state and discharge state of the capacitors, one and zero states of the capacitors <coughs> can be preserved for a longer time if the RC time constant is large. And that can be enhanced simply because Rs are unfortunately, what is the, what are the Rs here? Who, con who, are, who are contributing R here in this storage capacitor? How do you realize the storage capacitor usually in MOS technology? Usually by making a MOS capacitor simply by making a MOS semiconductor oxide metal, a MOS cap. You adjust the area of the capacitance. You adjust the thickness of the dielectric, the so-called gate oxide, to adjust the value of the capacitance. Okay? And if you have a larger area and smaller thickness, it is, expect, it is expected that CS will be large, and that is what is needed. As CS should be as high as possible. But again, our contradictory requirement is that I need a very, very high memory capacity, a very, very high level of integration density. I want to pack million transistors in a chip. That's how we can have million memory cells in a chip. One gigabit, one megabit DRAM, what does it mean? There are at least one million such transistors on the chip, ex excluding the peripheral sense amplifiers and other circuit, whatever is needed, input, output, and all these things, decoding circuit and other things. So at least there is a need for one million transistors to be packed on a chip of size typically about a centimeter by centimeter. 